Hey there, foodies. Get ready to feast your eyes on the craziest moments that MasterChef judges and contestants alike have gone completely bonkers. From epic meltdowns to jaw-dropping decisions, this wild ride will leave you hungry for even more drama. First up, we're diving into some of the juicier bits of MasterChef Season 2, Canada Edition. The blue team, led by Lynn, the culinary commander, Patelier, was hitting something of a rough patch. And this wasn't your average kitchen showdown. We've got Lynn's military background shown off full force here. Buckle up, because what went down during this challenge was insane. This is how I want the brochettes, people! I'm nervous about Lynn's leadership. She has a military background. Talk about a kitchen throwdown. But is Lynn going to be feeling the heat? How about everybody else? She was pushing everyone to hustle, and everyone was pretty much giving it their all. But could they handle Lynn on top of the challenge at hand? Let's see what happened next. Okay, Jen, move it. Yeah, I'm going as fast as I possibly can. Oh, boy. Now, Lynn was on top of Jen, trying to get her to use the mandolin. But using a mandolin isn't always super simple, and it's pretty dangerous. And let me tell ya, Jen was putting in some serious effort regardless. But it didn't quite go to plan. All I hear in my head right now, Use the mandolin! Use the mandolin! Everybody by now should know how to use a mandolin. I know. Hey, I don't want any lip service. Man, with how Lynn was barking orders like a drill sergeant, Jen may as well have been in the trenches. But Lynn just couldn't be satisfied. Poor Jen was feeling like the whole kitchen had their eyes on her, and she was ready to throw in the towel. Or, well, apron. The tension was absolutely wild. But just then, Jen was about to turn up the heat, but... Do you want to do it yourself? Pardon me? Yeesh. That doesn't look good. Jen and Lynn may as well have been at each other's throats, and the judges were picking up on it too. Now, here's the big question. Were the judges going to side with Jen, or stick to Lynn's madness and hope there was a method to it? Well, only one way to find out. Honestly, I don't think it's a big deal. If she didn't know how to use it, she can cut it any way she wants. As long as you get it cut, that's fine. Did you see that? They dropped those truth bombs real quick. Lynn was a mess, and she just couldn't get it going. But let's just say she wasn't taking that advice with a pinch of salt. Her flavors were definitely off. But before we could dwell on that for even a second, a massive twist was around the corner. The parsley has to be chopped. It doesn't go in the mirror pool. Ah, I don't think any of you saw that coming, huh? I know I certainly didn't. That's got a stint. But what this next contestant did was even worse. Oh boy, Cutter was a walking disaster. Picture this. A mix of shameless, annoying, and downright rude attitudes. Safe to say, not the kind of person you'd want to work with. Sure, the guy had the determination, but his ego was absolutely massive. And the dude wasn't checking it at the door. Let's not forget his cringe-worthy streak of flops, either. Dude couldn't even have a single somewhat normal challenge. Get ready, because this is a train wreck to end all train wrecks. Uh, I have to disagree with Chef Ramsay. I think it actually tastes pretty good to me. Cutter's cake, they were saying, had way, way too much sugar. While Dan's cake was just like the Sahara Desert, completely dry. Gotta say... Hard to tell which one was worse. But here's the kicker. Cutter, with all the bravado in the world, went head to head with the judges, pretty much saying he didn't give a damn about their feedback. The guy also had the audacity to essentially insult Joe's palate. Uh-oh, not a good idea. And then, get this, he was going on and on about poor Leslie. Can you believe it? And folks, just you wait for the bomb he was about to drop. If it makes you even half as angry as it made me, well, you're gonna be pissed as hell. Dude. Look, I'm on the edge of going home. I'll be honest with you, I'm on the edge of going home. Baking sucks for me. Whoa, hold up a sec. Did I hear that right? So when they grilled him about his defensiveness, he insisted he was just putting his heart and soul into his dishes. But guess what? Come judgment time, Ramsey called Cutter out. He didn't mince words and pointed out how the dude didn't have a respectful bone in his body. And surprise, surprise, Cutter was back in the hot seat again. I mean, can you blame him? This guy had bottom two written all over him. Yeah. If you think Gordon's pal is terrible, you're allowed to That's think that. That's not what I said at all. Don't put words in my mouth. 
Man, dude just doesn't know when to quit. It's because of chefs like him that team challenges seem more like teen drama. If you ask me, I think the dude had a unique talent. He'd just squabble over the smallest amount of critique, turn the judges sour, and spread his negativity all over the place. And oh boy, the shouting matches. Like, I have no idea how Cutter got on the show to begin with. The dude was scraping the bottom of the barrel from the very start, both with his food and his attitude. But hold up. Here comes a plot twist. After nearly getting the boot a bunch of times, he finally started to shape up, slowly putting his ego on the back burner and, hey, actually listening to feedback sometimes. And guess what? It paid off. He finally whipped up some killer dishes later on. However, that doesn't mean he got any love from the viewers. They pretty much hated him. Like, it's no secret that a ton of fans haven't forgiven him for his, well, it tasted good, so it must be good comment. Nor should they. And people continue to joke about his artisan pizza as well. But you know what? I totally agree with this guy over here who thinks that Cutter's unwillingness to learn from his mistakes or even admit that he makes them in the first place made him so disliked by the judges and the people at home. But do you know what happens when two contestants decide to lock horns with each other instead of, you know, actually participating in the competition? Well, definitely not anything good. Okay, so let me introduce you to David, the season's golden boy. This guy was top shelf stuff, straight out of fancy schmancy fine dining. It's MasterChef, bro, calm down. But he had the skills to run away with the whole thing. And the dude loved a good solo challenge. But was he a team player? Shockingly, yeah. And what's more, he had a heart full of passion too. I mean, this dude actually signed up for the competition for his kid's sake. I can respect that. But hey, not all that glitters is gold. And David's attitude definitely wasn't. The dude had a hell of a temper and a perpetual aggressiveness that followed him around like a bad smell. Not to mention that his hostility could put a bulls to shame and his explosions would make aluminum foil in a microwave blush. Yeah, dude's not looking so golden now, huh? Like seriously, what do you have to say about this? I don't know why you wouldn't give it to Brandy. I know David gets easily frustrated. Man, he really dropped the ball on that, didn't he? But David flipped the script and showed Sean his place. But did he step up to the plate? So here's the thing. This dude was cocky to boot. He wasn't all aggro, hostility, and explosive temper. Oh no, he had an ego the size of Jupiter too. That is to say, he had a massive problem with people he saw as his lessers. And to make things worse, he had such a short fuse. Yep, the dude wouldn't think twice before having a huge tantrum on national television. He was even caught pouting and giving his best toddler impression right to the cameras. I honestly don't even know how he has the energy to keep this sort of act up. You're an idiot. <laughs> idiot. <sighs> Personal attacks, David? You're gonna get mad like that? Clearly, this guy was beyond pissed, and nope, he wasn't planning on hitting the brakes. You can't forget his most famous move, though. Trying to bounce from the whole competition when the top five were on deck. Talk about drama. Dude was pouring gasoline on every fire that he possibly could. And that aggression, again, it was totally off the charts. The dude just could not calm down for half a second. Home cooks like Brandy, Tenoria, Kate, and Dan did their best to keep him at arm's length, or even further if they could manage it. But here's the thing. He and Sean were actually cooking up a friendship at first, but that blew up in both of their faces super quickly. Now, Sean had his hands full, testing David, but as you know, David had a mouthful to dish out himself. And this idiot doesn't even get protein, and then I get this and oh, no, it's you won't believe it, but Ramsey was actually trying to throw in a little bit of goodwill in the face of it all. It's rare you see the guy on the back foot. Meanwhile, David was just trying to be all friendly and whatnot. But guess what? His comebacks were just so totally far off. Seriously, check this out. For every ounce of support Ramsey tried to give, David had a pound of ice cold attitude to retaliate with. It's like, oh, smoke trout and some Asian stuff. <laughs> it's just it's a joke. Either way, I can tell you Ramsey came so close to blowing up right in his face. The dude beyond deserved it. 
but I've got respect for Ramsey to actually be able to hold back in the face of it all. But if you thought that was bad, then wait till you see what happened with this next set of contestants. So picture this. This squad had been through hell at Sandy Shores, and there was chaos left, right, and center. Now they were all back at the MasterChef kitchen, facing the pressure test of their lives. I doubt these guys had faced a make it or break it moment of this scale in their lives, let alone the competition. And I'd bet good money they haven't seen one like it since. So let's take a look at the madness for ourselves, shall we? Between us, and it would not be healthy for anything. I think we learned a lot from yesterday. Meet Chrissy Biasiello, probably the biggest drama queen in MasterChef history. Starting off misunderstood, she just kept doubling down on her rudeness. But hey, eventually she managed to kick it up a notch by pissing everyone off and putting her fiery temper on full display. You see, she wasn't an average, ordinary bully. Oh no, she was a bully the likes of which I've never seen before. And to make things worse, she was never one to own up to her own blunders in the kitchen. And oh, the kind of grudges she held on to. She took offense with the smallest of things and held on to them in a vice grip. And get this, not even the judges were safe from the kind of fury that she was dishing out on a daily basis. She was throwing out threats left, right, and center and boasted so openly about how much of a bully she was in high school. Sounds to me like she peaked in high school. Well, anyway, take a look at this. I said almost burnt. Hey, 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 All hey, right, hey, hey. shut the up. There's no stopping her, that's for sure. But you know who else that reminds me of? Brie Kosher. And well, she wasn't afraid to take Chrissy on. Brie was usually chill, keeping her head down and not making much of a ruckus. But Brie wasn't meek. When she's had enough, watch out. Well, Brie decided to give Chrissy a taste of her own medicine. And guess what? Chrissy couldn't handle the heat and flipped out. You bitching about everything. And here yeah. you are coming in like, oh, you guys, it was such a bad team. Oh boy, like I said, Chrissy just wouldn't quit. But hold it right there, because she still had another nasty surprise up her sleeve. Really? What are you gonna do? Yeah. Good, I That's hope you, I you can't sit here and talk to God like an adult. All you ever want to do is hit everyone in the face. One minute. God, that's hard to watch. But I've got to respect Brie for standing up to Chrissy when no one else could. And viewers online had a lot to say about Chrissy, too. Nothing good. One commentator couldn't believe why she was kept on the show for so long. From rolling her eyes to her snarky comments, the only thing she did well was be mean to her fellow contestants. Not exactly what they signed up for. It's crazy how Joe said it was the toughest decision of his life. I don't know, bro. Seems like a pretty easy choice to me. Viewers can't help but wonder why he had such a hard time letting her go. Meanwhile, another user mentioned how she has an issue with vegetarians in particular. Whoa, that never crossed my mind until I read this. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And you know what? I'm not done with her yet because Chrissy thought she was smarter than the judges. And boy, does that make me cringe. Her not-so-top-tier culinary chops were plain for everybody to see. Well, except for her, leaving secondhand embarrassment in her wake. Like, just look at how casually she talks back to Joe. Way below your capability. You playing it safe and you could be in danger. I'm, you know, I'm not I, I playing just... it safe. Oh boy, here we go again. And I thought we had enough of this with Cutter. Chrissy thought her dish was as good as gold. But we know how this story goes. It's a tale as old as time, and the judges knew it too. Don't take my word for it. See it for yourselves. I know my fish is cooked perfectly. I know my potatoes taste amazing. Thinking she's got more flavor than the masters. Yeah, this isn't gonna end well. Check this out. She had this wild notion in her head that her fried catfish was like a five-star dish, when honestly, it may as well have still been swimming around in the mud. Talk about delusional. She was convinced the judges were out to get her, even before they took a bite. But nah, I don't think it's a them problem. It's a you problem. So get this. She went back to her station and went on a huge rant about her catfish being the dish of the century. She was like, the judges won't get it, so let me just drag Joe down with me while I'm at it. But Joe saw that coming from a mile away. 
Safe to say, the man wasn't dishing out compliments. Now, say what you will about him, but at least he had the decorum to try and warn her she was on the wrong path. If you want to talk behind my back, have the balls to say it up here in front of me. But if you thought that everything we've covered so far was insane, oh boy, you're not ready for what's coming up next. At this point, our team and having that pressure, it just builds and builds and builds. Lynn over here was sweating bullets. And you could tell even without looking at him too closely, since he was wobbling around like a newborn deer and making the most basic of mistakes. Like, I get the pressure he's under, but it's MasterChef, man. You knew what you were signing up for. Well, thank goodness he had Ramsey there to keep him in check. But let me tell ya, Lynn wasn't exactly about to get a high five from the chef. For it again, and you're wiping the plates. No, I yeah, have some self-awareness, dude. Ramsey's temper was definitely warranted here. Well, that was a short one. But speaking of tempers, let's head over to this next example with our good old pal, Joe Bastianich, taking the spotlight. Trust me, Joe's got a taste for tough love and he's far from afraid of giving it. A fact that's made plain as day in this next clip. You gotta be kidding me, Slim. This is like a, a buffet gone bad. Get this, he didn't even bother tasting the food, but that's not even the half of it. Now, we know Joe. He's not exactly polite even at the best of times. Sometimes, when an outstanding dish comes up for judgment, he just calls it pretty good before sauntering off without another word. But when the bad dishes come out, so does his fury. The dude loves to throw dishes straight into the trash. Love, love, loves it. Now, I'm definitely not the biggest fan of his particular kind of antics, but hey, that's reality TV for ya. And don't forget, he also loves taking a sledgehammer to people's confidence. The dude bandies out huge gut punch insults almost as easily as breathing. Just like this moment right here. You need to be listening to what we're telling you about what we're producing because this is ridiculous. And here, he did both at the same time. Not exactly a nice move, huh? But hey, that's the way it goes in the MasterChef kitchen sometimes. But a ton of fans of the show are on the same page I am about his act. Like, this episode's audience wasn't exactly giving him a standing ovation for it. I mean, we all know how Ramsay hates people who waste food. And here we have Joe trashing every other plate he has the slightest problem with. You gotta wonder how Ramsey and Joe can manage to stay in the same room as each other. But hey, after a bit of a kitchen hiatus, the restaurateur was back with a softer side. Starting from season 9, he was like a whole different person. Encouraging, lending a helping hand, and dishing out some genuine warmth. But don't think he had gone completely soft. He still had a sprinkle of spice. Those critiques? Well, they were like a marinade, meant to tenderize the cooks and help them improve later on down the line. Anyway, this one is no less insane than the previous one, and trust me, it's only gonna get way more intense. Remember this quote? I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish was the worst one here. Esther's dish looked pretty shit. Think what you want. Well, that was Christian Collins. So, after Max got the boot, the guy's cockiness and arrogance went through the roof. We're talking full-blown ego explosions. He turned into a selfish show-off, a total me, myself, and I kind of guy. And his attitude? Horrible, sour, and just plain difficult to watch. He went all out with his rudeness, dishing out disrespect to everybody that he could. And what's more, oh, he was ready to toss his own teammates under the bus without a second thought. We were very disappointed. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. Esther's dish looked pretty <laughs> Think what you want. Whoa, did you catch that? Joe's comment hit real hard, and man, Max's face showed it all. But Christian wasn't about to sit around and take it. Far from it. Nope. Unlike a lot of the other folks I've talked about so far, Christian just flat out denied what the judges had to say. No beating around the bush. I don't agree with you. We're trying to give you constructive criticism. By this time, Chef Ramsay had enough and decided to dish out some truth to Christian. Can't blame him though. Christian's the kind of guy you wouldn't want anywhere near you. And Ramsay and his fellow judges had to face him down every other day. Unfortunately, your talent's not matching your arrogance. 
the kind of back talk Christian was throwing down, the judges didn't hesitate for a second to let him have it. His dish sucked, and they made sure he knew it. Now, this next one. Oh boy, this next one. A joke. I don't know what to say. You know I'm not a rabbit, and yet you serve me food that's fit for a rabbit hutch. Dang, did you see those faces? Total disappointment. But Ramsey definitely knows how to call it when he sees it, and oh boy, did he see it. And here comes Joe. Let me tell ya, he wasn't much of a happy camper either. No, he only had more fuel to pour over the fire at this point. I went out and told everyone how good you were. Absolutely. You're in a landslide, you know? Now, this is Howard, a guy who's got an ego as big as they come. Like everybody else I've talked about, he made arrogance and condescension his lifestyle. The guy thought he was the king of the kitchen, but his cooking wouldn't have even been fit for the medieval peasantry. And did I mention his laziness? You could easily say he's got a PhD in slacking off. He also had this wild strategy of hoping other cooks crashed harder than him on any given night in order to stay in the competition. Like, at least he showed up for team challenges. Gotta say, the guy's got at least one saving grace. He had more excuses than the kitchen has knives. And don't even get me started on the waterworks that came out every time he was in the hot seat. But leave it to Joe to set the record straight. He gave him a taste of reality. And I hope you're ready to witness a wake-up call, folks. This is a waste of our time. So, which of these moments truly shocked you? Let me know in the comments down below. And before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.